Hi guys, this is Forte. This video, we're gonna have a little background music playing because this is gonna be a bit of a different video. We don't have any tray ideas for this. We well, actually, no, 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 just kidding. We do have a, we do have tray ideas for this video, but it's not gonna be for a swing trade. These are more of a long-term trades. Long-term, that doesn't mean you just buy and hold it, close your eyes, you hold it for 200 years. That's not how it works. There's gonna be a point where we sell them, right? But because I think right now I'm extremely uh, bullish on the market. Therefore, I think it's time to ready to buy some, you know, mid long term trade ideas and hold them for a little bit. And the reason why I'm bullish, if you take a look at the S&P, the SPY, right? We have we've been rising and uh, we, we had a big volume today on the update on the uh, I think it was last Thursday. It was the stock. The SPY was up about almost 6%. The Nasdaq was up 6%. And these three last three days, right? The two days that were down uh, from the previous day was both down on low volume. Yes, we're below the 200 uh, day moving average, but we're above the 50 day and the 20 day moving average. I'm extremely bullish right now. 200 day is usually too late. For me, right? I think it's always, you know, it will act as something, likely we get up to it. And then if we're starting to put in some heavy distribution days, then I might start to think about selling and taking profits. But until we get there, we have the rising 20 day and the two and the 50 day moving average. Thus, I think it's you know good to start buying some stocks, right? And a couple of stocks I want to go over is TGLS. I'm going to turn the background music a little bit lower. TGLS, EMPHC, LH, KRUS, and BJ. And let's start. I'm gonna show you guys some process I go through. Number one, technical analysis. I need to be buying good charts, stock with good price and volume. And number one, they need to have great EPS and earnings. And then I wanna see about how their company is doing and what kind of, what what are the new idea that they're selling to me, right? And it's obviously for long term, people will think about you know Facebook, Amazon, stuff like that, Apple. Tesla, right? But the thing is, those are the stocks of the past. They're not making anything new. When's the last time you saw Facebook create anything new? Meta? Hell no, Metaverse, that's not a thing. Apple hasn't been really making good phones. Tesla has been, what? They got their, you know, Model S, uh, S3, XY. That's about it. Uh, they're not making anything new. Um. Uh, you know, Amazon, you know, ever since, you know, Jeff Bezos came down, there's nothing new. There's nothing innovative. The stock has already made their move and they have fall. And I think, you know, they're going to be the history. I want to see something new coming out. So that's why I've been looking. And these are the five stocks I have so far in my, you know, in my eyes so far, I might be start seeing more up the, you know, upcoming. But as of right now, I want to start doing some research on this and I haven't done research. I haven't done too much research yet. So I want to show you guys the process on how I do it. Let's start with uh, uh, EMPH, right? Uh, Emphase Energy, right? I think that's what it's called. And uh, number one, I, I use Market Smith because I because I am lazy. You guys can just use Google and find the EPS and sales. What Market Smith does it? I'm this is my not sponsor by the way. I wish I'm sponsored. I'm paying two like two hundred dollars a month to use this pro to use this program. Marcus Smith, if you're listening, I know you guys are going to be like, well, our product's so great. We don't need to sponsor anybody. But, you know, if you guys are looking for, you guys are, you know, looking to support a young boy in America that's 25 years old, you know, $200 a month is a lot of money. Let's be honest. But uh, it is what it is, right? Uh, I'm too lazy and uh, $200 is not too much money for me. So I'll pay, I pay for it, you know. But you know, free, free would be nice. It's never, it's never a bad idea to get free products, guys. When there, when, when the, when the, what, it, what was it? You know what? Let's continue. When, when, when I, rem I remember when I was in college, whenever there was a, like a, uh, a party or something, and it, they have free pizza, I would go and get three slices of pizza and just leave the party. I know, I know. You guys probably like, what, a, what, a, you know? Bear with me. So, sorry, back to the actual thing. EMPH, the stock, I, the first thing I want to see is, so it's a solar stock. Obviously, they probably sell some sort of a solar panel. And what I want to know is, what is it that makes them more special than the other guys in the field? So the other guys, other strong guys in the field I see is SHLS, 
and uh, ARRY. And these are all, both of them are new IPOs right here. And uh, they they have great earnings and great uh, great sales. And I want to see what's the difference between the, these three companies. Obviously, there are other stocks like for Solar, but uh, I don't know why it's not. That's the sell. Uh, first solar, but first solar has been having poor sales, so I don't even want to consider them. There's Maxion Solar. Uh, you know the we don't they don't they don't have much data for the earnings per share yet, so we don't know that. And their earnings are not that their sales are not that strong. We can see they're about 20 35 percent. Well, if you look at if you take a look at Array, their their sales is is a bombing. It's like you know 116, 173. EMPH has sales of like 46, 68, 81. We can see that it's accelerating. HSLS is also going up 23 and 52. So we can see that these companies are having great sales, right? Now I want to see what difference between these these three. As we have, so we have three candidates. We have EM, uh, EMPH, SHLS, and uh, ARRY. And I have pulled up their company presentation for you guys for the purpose of this video and have a look through them. I'm going to show you guys what, how should you and how should I look through these PowerPoints. And uh, this is a uh, uh, hopeful. Am I? Let's just do this. This is good. Number one, ignore whenever they say they're the best. Ignore when they say they're the world number one's leading economic company, whatever, market leader. Ignore all of that, okay? You wanna, if you wanna pay attention, let's say you really like, you wanna know what really is going on, you can read through all of this. Or you can just, you know, go all the way down to conclusion. So we can see EMPH, they wanna do customer first approaches, which, which is the same thing that Amazon did, right? 24 7 customer support and expert on site we have i have never really called him i don't use this product so if you guys know people that use this product you guys can ask them how how is the 24 7 customer support right and uh so develop best in class home so you see they always use this best in class you want to ignore whenever they say that so develop home energy system so they're introducing these stuff cool Build on acquisition to create a complete installation. So, uh, ensure homeowner installed infants are con continuously connected digitally, di di digital, digitally. Okay, cool. So what that means is, yeah. So there you go. We they're using cell phones. So everything is connected through apps. So there is like a little ecosystem within their own program. So that's that's a good thing. That's what Apple did back in the day. And not back in the day, but nowadays, right? And uh, Google, right? With their own ecosystem, you know, how Mac and iPad works together. So that's the type of thing they want to do. I don't know why you need that for solar system, but that's good to know. Next one, Array. Array technology presentation, right? We're gonna company overview. Let's just go all the way down. Where's the conclusion? Financial review, cool, 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 summary. So three reasons to invest in Array. This is beautiful. It's literally what these presentations are for, or reasons why you should put your money in there. So ground muscles is the fastest growing source of new gener uh so they're saying that whatever program they're using is the fastest growing source of new generation in the US. Uh six time of the residential market, mature company environment, array product lowest. I to be honest, I don't really know what the, what the, what this means. Opportunity for new product and service, non renewable. Okay, I don't know what they do. Let's go SHLS, let's go all the way down to the conclusion. If they have it, if they don't. Because I, I have pro three similar reasons. Okay, three similar reasons to. Invest. Ground mount is the fastest growing. They say that on the other on the other side as well. Array, six times the market. That's the same thing this one said. And uh, EBOS is required for every single project. So I don't know why EBOS is less explosive primary equipment. EBOS. What's EBOS? EBOS for solar. Mm. 
GPO system is electric balance system coming in a brick. I can make or break a solar project at an off from expense. And the long term issue. Okay, cool. Reasonable gaining wall size, overseas growth. International market is four times the size of the US. That's true. That I know that China is looking for solar power. Additional upside from EV charging. Now, to be honest with you guys, I know that solar power stocks are the leading thing, but personally, I wouldn't want to trade them because I have absolutely no idea what they do. <laughs> I can't comprehend. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there you go. So, and then let's let's go. Let's take a look for techno glass, cheaper glass. Uh, that's what I know from uh, TGLS. This one I actually have some uh, some shares in. I bought it here, and uh, the reason why we can pull up the uh, I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to do it. So we got Techno Glass, and then you go to their company, and then usually you scroll all the way down where it's usually at the top. You click Investor, and then usually they have presentations somewhere. Uh, view all presentation and the pre investor presentation. So basically, what this company does is you know they, they build these glass these um glass for these big buildings, tall buildings, right? And also for home uses, you can see right here. And their competitor is actually. Uh, what's the stock? AP. I, it's a uh, APOG. APOG. That is, I believe, their only competitor. And this stock has been as IPO since 1971. And yes, their you know the EP earnings is doing. They're doing pretty well in the recent quarters. But the sales is lacking. And then also we can see that the funds people are like basically big funds are actually selling. So I don't I don't really like this. Number one is because it's an old company. TGLS on the other side, it's a newer company. I think it IPO'd within the last eight years. And uh, yes, within the last uh, actually no last ten years. But uh, yeah, if you take a look, so they're they're the new dog in the game, and their earnings and sales is doing pretty good. So we know that they sell glass, and we know that buildings with a lot of money they like to build their buildings with a lot of glass not that hard to understand and then you just gotta go down all the way down and see how they do uh, appendix i went too much do 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 2022 key takeaway mm -mm -mm -mm. I'm trying to find a. Uh... So I, I, I guess that's all the. Okay, I think because some companies, uh, some presentation, they put what they do at the top, right? So it's right here. This is what they do. And then the other, the two, the three solar stocks, they were telling investors why they should invest in them, right? This one is obvious. We do glass work, and uh, this is how much money we make, this type of presentation. And uh, we don't need to, I don't really need to read how much money they make because I already know that. They do they are making money with their sales and earnings per share increasing and accelerating and uh that's it that's pretty much all i need to know so they're selling glass understandable and uh companies need glass making companies right and uh that that's all i look at cool i can that's enough for me to invest um so tgr is the check mark next one is cl clh right celsius we all know this. I don't know if we all know this stock. I haven't drank it. I don't know if it's good or not. But uh, I do know that they are selling in the Asian countries such as uh, China, right? And uh, corporate. Mm. Where's the investor? Investors right here. Yes. Not this presentation. And then show me press release.
So what I want to look for is a presentation. Okay, I think this is it. Guys, oh, I think that was it. Is this their presentation? I think this is their presentation. Okay. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> all right this is uh this is it, it, it this presentation sucks because it's number one like okay there you go this is their uh, company presentation i think we can all see it okay celsius uh i i've seen this uh, this drink at costco whenever i go there to buy my food and it's uh i never really had a chance to drink it because i don't drink energy drinks so if you guys have had it please tell me how it is in the comments section let's go through i know so we know that they're the epa the earnings per share is absolutely phenomenal we can see the clh the you know the sales is basically in the hundred percent and the company that the, a company that can make that much money is surely impressive right and the earnings per share is are all in the uh basically like thousands right hundreds hundreds of uh earnings and stock has been a while for it's been uh, been there for a while and i don't know why just recently they are making this much this much money perhaps the sales are uh, something is going in the company that's all i want to know and uh let's see uh sorry being so unorganized guys where the okay this is it my bad so this is their stock I mean, this is their company's presentation. Uh, they are affiliated with Pepsi, I think, right? So number one, we need to know what their comp who their competitors are. Competitor number one, we have Monster. So we want to take a look at Monster, basically. And I think that's pretty much it. The other one is um, Ripple, I think. But I think Monster is what we want to look at. It's more similar. Monsters are losing money earnings on earnings per share, and uh, the sales is going down now as well. Let's take a look at the monthly chart. Month, this monthly chart sucks. Marcus Smith, come on. So MS MNST, we can look at monthly chart. So this thing is pretty much, you know, all the way up here with a big boy, and then CLH is right here so we need to so here's what i like to do let's see where c um clh ipo so uh, on 2010 and monster ipo i'm not sure if this is their ipo date but on 2010 this is when celsius ipo and the stock is still doing great and i don't think they see clh as a big competitor yet we don't i don't see any correlation i don't see the stock being defeated by uh you know monsters anytime soon and uh, let's see so this is what they say blah 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 you know why they're better than others yep this this, this site is telling you why they're why they think they're better than others you don't have to listen to what they're saying all we gotta see is right here sales growth it is accelerating and the u.s market is accelerating at a much faster pace this thing the acceleration really kind of start ignore the line right here you want to look at the bar acceleration kind of started around these two years 2020 to 2021 and then through 20, 2020 to 2022 this thing has pretty much what is it that's way more than quadruple um calculator The sales went up almost eight times, basically within these two years. And now the, I want to take a look, look at the chart for monsters in the last two years. So this is when the acceleration start for the sales, right? And that ever since that move, the stock has made two thousand and one hundred percent. And that is in twenty twenty. And then this T in twenty twenty. On the other hand. 
the stock only made 80% move, which is a lot because I mean at a late, late stage bull market, a lot of stock has made a move like that, but nothing as explosive as EMPHs. And uh, Monsters actually just recent, recently made a high, I think. And Monster looks pretty good too. But C C L H obviously it's a new it's a new but it's a new baby. And uh it looks like it's still got more room to grow. Cause we don't see the chart actually slowing down right here. And a cool new energy drink. Yep, that's that's enough for me. So C L H energy drink. Uh, let's ignore ignore crushers for now. I want to talk about that last. The next next thing I want to talk about is uh, retail BJ BJ wholesales. It's a funny name I know. So here's the thing. BJ wholesale obviously the so the earnings for them is not their sales for them is not great. But the thing is the key takeaway here is in the last three quarters it has accelerated 10, 16, and twenty two, and we have earnings due tomorrow morning at eight thirty a.m. which is uh, November 17th, 2022 in the morning, 8.30 a.m. And uh, the learnings for the last three quarters per share is also accelerating at 14, 21, 29, which is not a lot, but, uh, you know, we don't know what the uh, sales will be for last quarter. So we'll get to know that tomorrow morning. If it's nothing crazy, I'm likely not going to buy it. I want to see if this company is doing something crazy because I know the returns on equity is absolutely insane, right? 93%. And IPO in 2018, so it's a new thing against uh, Costco, who is the king right now, right? If we take a look at so so the competitors are Costco, Walmart, Target, and we know that Target and Walmart hasn't been doing too well, right? And uh, they're like out of the well, Walmart is actually doing pretty. It's they're doing better than Target at least. The king right now is Costco. Everybody nowadays goes to Costco for shop, and. But the thing is, Costco Scott stock has been around for a long, long time. Like, it's, oh my god, uh, cost. Costco came out in 1990. I think the IPO day is one 1993. That was before I was born, and it's been a hell of a long ride, right? The stock has went up seven thousand hundred percent since then, and uh, this thing BJ IPO'd in. Let me see, double check if you can see it. BJ IPO'd in 2018. So let's take a look at the uh, Costco in 2018. 2018 Costco was somewhere around here, right? And uh, around this area. So in hindsight, we can sell Costco is pretty much unfazed by uh, BJ. So let's take a look at what makes me want to invest in BJ other than you know just playing old costco or just not invest in these stocks at all i want to see if they're making any difference so number one we want to go to their main website so this is their website it looks like target uh, we got rotisserie chicken here cool uh so they're selling food basically i they're wholesale so we know what we know, we know what wholesale is they sell some food we're gonna go to corporate investor relationship and then I want to go to the event investor presentation right here, PDF. All right. So BJ, hopefully, on, so on this presentation, you know, it's really, it's unlike solar. They have to explain to the investor what the hell are they doing and what the hell, like, if they're doing to make money. Technical, technical class is like, guys, we make class and we're making a lot of money. That's it. And BJ's now they have prop, they have things they want to present to investors. Number one, why do you want to give money to us rather than Walmart, Target, Costco, and other wholesale stocks? Right? So we want to scroll down and quickly go through and see if we can find those. Mm -hmm. Oh, right here. BJ suffered different retirement. So versus other club, we got so yeah, Sam's Club too. So Costco, Sam's Club. The reason why they want to be better than Sam's Club and the whole Costco is because okay, smaller pack size. So that's a thing. Costco do sell something for you know they sell. I I, I use Costco mainly for drinks and snacks, not for 
like meat. They're too much. I go to Whole Foods for that. Costco, um, um, I hate Hapu Jam, but uh, yeah. Costco, they are... I cannot buy meat here because I live alone and it's too much food. And uh, okay, so that's their advantage. They're selling their whole food, which means they're probably selling much better, better, uh, better, better price for Walmart and Target. And uh, yeah, they have they, they sell bulk size stuff too for sure because they're whole food sales. So smaller pack for smaller family relative to Costco. So that's what they do better. Uh, versus grocery, that's that's something I don't even look at because I don't really see Kroger and stuff as a competitor to these. Um, stuff online grocery. I don't think online grocery is popular in the US at all It's not because whenever I go to Costco the parking lot is always full. I Don't think people are using online grocery if you're using online grocery You might as well just order takeout. That's the thing only people that uses online grocery is when you get COVID and you're sick All right next uh, Let's see the retention for Okay, retention, 89% renewal rate, pretty standard. I think Costco is somewhere similar. Now I want to see how fast they're expanding as a whole food. And I think they definitely have to write that some, oh, right here, sorry. They opened five new clubs in 2015 and opened 11 in 2022. Okay, so next year we might be next, not next year, tomorrow we might need to, we might be able to see how many clubs they're opening for 2023. So they're opening, they, they opened five in 2021 and then 11 in 2022. So that accelerated, that doubled. That's pretty impressive. And uh, BJ Wholesales. How many BJ wholesales are there? I've looked this up before for you guys. Not seven, by the way. I've this is the only one I looked up because I was curious because I've never seen them in my state. Two fifty, two forty-five, and they're open. They opened um, eleven in twenty twenty-two. That is not very impressive. Where is the thing? That's not very impressive. So I want to see how much you're opening for 2023. For 241, um, 245 locate, uh, you know, location store, and they're only planning on opening, let's say, like 10 or 20 in a year. 20 might be impressive, but like 10, I'm not like 10, 11, 13. I don't think that's impressive. I don't think that's crazy growth. So I might not even want to buy this, right? Really, it all depends on tomorrow's earning. I'll be waking up at night eight thirty and check the earnings and check their presentation and uh, see how it goes. So BJ's wholesale is really a question mark. Next thing I want to look at is Kura Sushi, right? I've been posting this on YouTube a lot and Twitter a lot. This is a uh, a brand new IPO, uh, not brand new, but not two thousand and nineteen. And uh, you know, they came back up and now we're setting up pretty nicely. You know, we came back and tested the 200 day moving average and likely we're going to be, if we can break the 50 day moving average, I think this thing can be a buy. We are the earnings per share. They just had earnings and uh, they're up 244, 240% and the uh, previous two quarters ago, they were up 109% and the uh, sales is all, you know, ever since the um i don't know what happened here but they started having explosive sales and yes they're kind of declining coming down but that could be due to seasonality you want to take a look at the actual sales number right here they are making money and uh we can see that institutions are actually increasing their buys on this stock and they have really low shares outstanding so when this stock is a risky stock really thin name only aggressive players should be playing this let's take a look at their website obviously the web's uh market smith is broken again Kura Sushi. Go to their website, you scroll all the way down, you find investor relations. And then we want to see, so they have their. Presentation.
so they are growing at a so they had a 11 14 so that's what three 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 five two and then i think they do have 32 right now so they increase by seven so they are increasing so i so th this is a really common thing you see in the you know a lot of businesses Number one, they have to start growing slow to ensure that there's money coming in so they can use the money to reinvest into more money to make other big businesses. And you can see that for the last first couple of years, they've been pretty, you know, conservative. And this year, 2021, they went up and started becoming a little bit more aggressive and opened seven extra stores. That is about four, on average, three to four more in the previous couple of years in the U.S. And we know that there are a lot of sushi restaurants in America. I don't know what you guys like to eat. I love to eat sushi. But the problem is that there's a lot of bad sushi restaurants and uh this is this, this is my bias that's why i'm looking at this thing and i have a big hope for this one because if they can have a mcdonald's sushi in the u.s and gets and that just kills all the bad sushi restaurants that is beautiful i would love to see that happening and uh so that's my bias and i do they they did talk about how much how many stores they want to open because they just had their earnings call and i believe this is it and they were pretty transparent with how many stores they want to open for so this is their fiscal outlook uh, uh, the outlook for the 2023 fiscal year 2023 they are looking to open 9 to 11 new restaurants now this year they opened seven new restaurants and if they're actually looking to open 11, I think that's a big jump, right? They have about 30, 33, 32 stores in America and they're opening 11 more. That is really impressive. Compare that to Whole Food. Whole Food had 241 and they opened, what, like 11? That's how many this restaurant is opening. So I, I think this is re a really, really interesting story. And uh, Kura Sushi. I like that one. Now let's take a look at all these stocks chart. Uh, number one, we have TGLS. TGLS, let's take a look at the weekly chart. Let's take a look at our weekly is enough, you know, right? This thing IPO'd in 20, 2014, stock got plummeted because of COVID. And ever since COVID, this thing rallied about 1400%, crazy percentage. And then we act, the stock actually had a quick undercut of the entire consolidation right here on the, I believe it was June. Yes, June 24th. When the S and P and the QQQ make a make a low, and then ever since that, the S and P and the Nasdaq has made newer lows, but this stock has never made newer lows. Which and then what it did is made it made a uh, higher low, and by now this this day volume right here, big selling day, is kind of distorting the the volume down here. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. This way it's easier for me to explain. So this stock on the right after it undercut we rally back up for about a pretty big percentage right here i think it's about eight years 62 percent and then we came back down you know it's an extended move the stock needed to rest and then if you take a look at it on the volume right here during this entire rest period we have a decrease in volume that is accumulation and then on the very last uh week the entire week traded 249,000 shares that is institution accumulating shares right here below all the moving averages and boom we're moving up on big volume i have a position i have shares in this stock and the chart looks phenomenal and uh yeah that's tgls i am looking to hopefully in the future it can do more it can consolidate more for me to add i, I do like this stock clh this stock is very interesting the weekly chart we had a we have a big cup and a handle very 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 faulty but the thing is we did rally ever since the june uh it, this stock made a low way before june in may actually and uh, we did undercut so that's a good thing i wanted to see and the stock rally and we're coming back down that's the you know to form a handle and then in the la in last week we just finished undercutting and then we're rally that's the thing i want to see we finish undercutting this um uh, what do you call it uh this consolidation right here after an undercut it quickly rallied up 28 percent and i do have a small position in this one a really small one because i think it's a little bit extended on the shorter term but who knows and uh yeah i there's way there's a lot of chance to add this stock man like if this thing breaks up into a new high i might be looking to add into this stock 
we'll see but if you take a look at volume right here on this low consolidating couple of weeks that we just had we also consolidated on low volume and then we have we started coming back up on big volume so i am seeing institution accumulating shares in this stock grh next one bj whole food i think um this is probably one of the better chart out there we have a quick undercut right here quickly you know on big volume and then we stock recovered up and rallied about 52 percent and then we have a perfect cup and a handle right here actually um i don't like to use patterns too much but you know why not i'm pointing them out basically the, the price are tightening up and the stock are you know after extended move breaking up into all-time high we found sellers sellers coming in and then the stock didn't plummet after sellers come in and then instead we started going uh what is it we started uh consolidating right that's what well, that's when you want to see price tightening up take a look at a daily chart a buy above this high right here i think it's appropriate but you have to keep in mind earnings is tomorrow the fundamental is not so great i don't see you know i i don't see them being a big competitor among other whole food sales such as costco and sam's club because they're opening two less stores costco has like 600 locations in the u.s whole food only has 245 and they're all near the bay area on top of that they're only opening as far as, far as we know in 2020 2022 they only opened 11 that's not a lot so i'm getting thirsty talking so much So tomorrow's earnings is really important. Pay attention to it. If they say they're opening like 35 stores, 50 stores or something crazy like that, buy in the morning. I think that's a good thing. And I want to see, I want to see earnings per share, like over 55%. I want to see big numbers or 60%. The higher the better. I want to see sales doubling. But if that's not happening, then I'm not a big fan of it. KRUS. This is a stock where. Um, my, my, my friends, they uh, my, my, my partner, you could say, are afraid to buy, right? But I am looking at the stock. The, the reason he's afraid is because, you know, it trades really pretty much no volume, right? 900, 91,000 shares on average in the last 90 days per day. And that's not a lot. That's very little. But, uh, which means it's going to be a really aggressive buy if you do buy it. Because low volume means high volatility. Means if buyers or any institutions are gonna sell you're gonna lose a lot of money so you always want to start really careful with this thing and uh on this stock I, I i don't have a position yet but i'm looking to add a position we have undercut this low right here and uh, just like many undercut if the sellers are actually strong we should see this thing rally for about maybe uh you know the undercut this thing right here is 6.4 so i want to see at least another six dollar rally from this from the first low right here that's where i want to buy we have rallied up about five dollars i want to see this thing above like let's say you know 70 dollar and uh, 80 cents that's where i want to put in my buy yes we're going to be below the 10 week moving average and the 20 week moving average but the 20 week moving average is you know it's going up and it's a low share stock moving averages can easily be changed by just one or two institutions buying and uh that's it for my analysis tonight i know it's a long video this video is probably one of the longest video i've ever recorded right and oh my gosh did i just did i do the whole thing on, on this page no <laughs> did i do the whole technical analysis on the google page oh my gosh Oh, okay you know what it's okay I'll, I'll quick i'll briefly go through it the <coughs> guys i need to rest pgls you know beautiful stock <laughs> uh, um, okay we have under okay you, oh my god my brain hurts oh TGLS, great stock, undercut the uh, consolidation right here. And then ever since the June low that I made, the stock never made a lower low, it made a higher low. And then right here, I'm gonna zoom in because this uh, this bar right here is actually 
distorting the volume so i'm going to zoom in a little bit and then we realize that this right here is has a you know the volume here is decreasing while it's pulling back it means that institutions are accumulating shares they're you know they're accumulating shares for the for the stock to go right here below all the moving averages and now we're moving up on high volume so here i have a position CELH is a stock I have a really tiny position because I think on the lower term and the shorter term they're actually really overextended. Their stock is up about 28%. And uh, you know, we but the, th the thing is it did recently last week just undercut this consolidation that I just had. And on this decline right here, we also had low volume. And perhaps, you know, it's a quick reject at the uh, all-time day all-time high, but the stock never really plummet. And ever since the low that I made in May, we never really Go even it's not even close you know to the to that low again so i think stock this stock has potential bj same idea we got a perfect cup in the handle uh pretty much the same idea we have an undercut right here that i made in may 2022 and then we never really got below that and then we never really got close to it this is rally about 52 percent since may and then we came down a little bit after breaking the all-time high have a little bit price tiny right but like i said I don't know. I don't see how they can be, how they can compete against Costco and Sam's Club. Last one is KRUS. Uh, what I just talked about is the is that my my partner is afraid to buy this stock because how thin that it's trading. It's trading about ninety one thousand shares per day, which is very little, and uh, which means it's really really risky. It's a really aggressive trade. Therefore, you want to start small, right? And uh, ignore the moving averages right here real quick. The stock had a made a low right here on June 23rd. We rallied up about 28% and then we came back down, undercut it right here. And then we found big buyers at a 200 day moving average, meaning that buyers are actually showing up. And uh, this day we had a pretty big volume, uh, you know, on average to the uh, relative to the, to the previous volume that it had. If you look at it, take a look at the bottom, we're obviously above that line. And I want to see this thing rally at least about 6.5 points, right? Ever since from this low. Because that means that, okay, the stock tried to move lower, but it failed and the buyers are showing up, meaning that institutions are having their bid around this area, right? And if this thing can quickly get above, uh, let's say $70 and 70 or 90 cents right here, I'll be getting myself a position for KRUS, which is a Kura Sushi. And that's it for this video. Long video, my brain hurts. I cannot believe, I, I, I'm not sure if I did the model, my technical analysis on, my, on that Google Doc. And I'm just like, you know but whatever if you guys like the video please subscribe follow tweet like and uh, i don't think i'll be making another video this long ever again it's really tiring thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys next time peace by the way not all of these stocks are gonna work none of this is financial advice and very likely only one out of the four is gonna work that's usually how trading goes